When did feminist and supposedly strong women become so dependent on men being allies? Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. I recently came across a video of Amber Tamblin, of which I had no idea who she was, instructing men on how to be better allies to women. It was in a Now This video session. Now, my instructions to anyone that I work or associate with of either sex would be to leave me alone to do my job and live my life and I will do the same for you and let's work together like equal colleagues if necessary and we won't have any problems. But this actress person, as I find out in doing a little research, is a very privileged daughter of famous actors and artists who got her acting debut on none other than General Hospital, a soap opera. She is also married to David Cross, if that tells you anything. She must have joined the GH cast after I stopped watching mainstream television because the last thing I remember about watching General Hospital was when the Luke and Laura saga was going on. In fact, I would practically run home from school every day to catch the show. But don't get me distracted. Anyway, for this week's video, I'm going to critique and comment on her short video from now this. But before I get into all of that, please make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. A donation would be the ultimate, and I'm still sending out unique gifts for your donations. I'm also posting on other platforms due to the censorship that has been happening here. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my stuff. After watching this video and then searching for the original copy, I noticed that it was about a year old, but the sentiments seem to still be the same, or at least threefold today. And don't forget, I'm a little bit behind on a lot of this stuff. I got a little bit of a late start, as you know. So consider this me catching up on things that I may have missed because of my late start here, but also speaking on a topic that is still pretty prevalent today. One of the first things I noticed about this video when I found it was that it had way more thumbs down than it had thumbs up. I believe that's what we call ratioed here in Cyberland now. Let's find out why. I know men really mean well, and sometimes you feel like the best way to do that is to say that you don't feel comfortable hiring women anymore. That's wrong. Uh, I think sometimes talking about how you don't feel comfortable hugging women anymore, that is also wrong. Okay, first of all, haven't women been spending decades, if not longer, to get men to let us in on their feelings? And now she's complaining about what they feel? And that they talk about it? Don't feel comfortable hiring women anymore. Just wrong? How about asking why? People don't just come up with this stuff out of nowhere. If I was to take a guess about why, I would say, oh, maybe... Or maybe this might give you another hint. Uh, 
Uh, I think sometimes talking about how you don't feel comfortable hugging women anymore. That is also wrong. Hugging women. Wait, so what? Women can insist on consent, but men can't? I also think when you're talking over women or telling them what you think is best for them, that is also wrong. Who actually does this? I have never had a man tell me anything of the sort. Unless it's my doctor's, but I still make up my own mind based on his supposed expertise. But no one can be an expert on you. Except you! But don't get me distracted. And if she's talking about the smile thing that they always seem to complain about, most of the men that I've met say that they think that ladies they encounter are much too valuable, important, and attractive to be upset and sad. They want women to be happy, and I still have the option of letting them know where they can stick it or not. I won't ever expect someone or tell someone to change their behavior because I'm not about to change mine. At the end of 2017, a few months after millions of women told their stories of sexual harassment and assault across the world, my friend, an unknown and up-and-coming actor named Ryan Reynolds, never heard of him, said to me, I get it. I get what women are asking for right now. They would like us to back off and sit down and be quiet for a change. Then for a change? Like women don't always have their mouths open too. Hey, I'm case in point right now. If that sentiment was the other way around, she would be ranting now instead of pushing her informative yet condescending to men book. Now, sorry, I haven't read it, but the title Era of Ignition, coming of age in the time of rage and revolution, gives me an idea of what she's saying here, especially since the word ignition and rage are a bigger text than the rest of the title, even Revolution. The fact that she also made a manifesto in this book for men only is also kind of a clue too. I may read it someday, but um, probably never. And probably because of this video that I'm critiquing right now. If someone wants to give it to me, I might think about it, but I'm damn sure not spending any hard-earned cash on it. Then once you've figured out what you need from us, you'll tell us. As if the sit down and shut up wasn't enough. I think women like her have already decided. And if he gets it, then why is he offering more? And we'll need to get on board and support you. Even if women decide after you have muzzled yourself to eliminate all men? Suddenly a light bulb went off. Wait, wait, a light bulb went off? Well, this explains a lot. Most times when folks have an idea, the light bulb goes on. Off. So what I have here is a male ally manifesto. Wait, wait, manifesto. Isn't that something that communists use? And a few things that I think men can do to support women and be in allyship with marginalized voices. And what women's voices are marginalized these days? Certainly not this actress, activist, writer, all-knowing, well, you get the picture. But don't get me distracted again. Ah, it's her personal journey. So she does think that her experiences are more important than anyone else's. I'm getting an even clearer picture now. This is for every kind of man you might know, be it your boss, your friend, your partner, your husband, a political candidate. Nobody gets a pass in this one. But you notice who she portrays as all kinds of men. One. And now for the list. 
Why do all of these hot lists all sound like either grocery lists or some kind of presentation that you see in school or work from mediocre students or workers who did just enough work to get by? Listen more than you assert. Read the emotional room and see what women need. If we're doing a business deal or something like that, this is not the way to go. And why just tune into women? First of all, that's kind of creepy. And everyone has needs. Why not just give everyone in the boardroom a foot massage while being balled out for last week's bad sales figures? It will probably accomplish just as much as trying to guess the needs of everyone. Why do the women take precedence over everyone else as well? What if there are kids around? I mean, how selfish can one get? By the way, this isn't considered equal treatment. Uh, this would be considered special treatment because of your body parts. How about also, instead of trying to read minds, why not ask everyone what they need? I know that I would feel more empowered if someone asks me for my input rather than trying to read my mind and assume some action. To me, this seems exactly the opposite of what she really wants. Am I missing something here? Also, just listening without knowing what you're listening for sounds like an exercise in futility to me. Not what you think they need based on your opinions. Support the efforts for equality and change being led by women, most especially women of color. Again, put women of all kinds, no matter what they're doing or saying, ahead of everyone else. In most cases, third wave feminists are trying to eliminate all males, by which all intents and purposes would ultimately destroy the entire population. But don't get me distracted. And in the LGBTQIA community, let them lead the charge. What charge? From what I can see with all of these movements, there are no men to take charge. So what is she even talking about here? Most times, any man that claims to or tries to get involved is usually looking to get lucky. But uh, you didn't hear that from me. Believe me though, this is most guys' mantras. I mean, you won't be able to breed that out of them after thousands of years of evolution. They may not act on it, but they will always be trying to see if they can. In another way, say it's a boss type situation. You want a male boss or owner to just let women run the company? I don't think even a woman business owner or boss would agree to that. I know I wouldn't. I would want the best person for the job, which would be me because I started the business and I know what I want and how to get it done. But if I get five different candidates for a job of different ethnicities, I ain't gonna look at their ethnicity for some points that'll never add up and might end up ending my business. I'm going to look for qualifications and ability. My questions will be education, abilities to get the jobs done, and personality. Can you do the job I need you to do effectively and efficiently, and can you look presentable to the image and reputation of the company? Do you dress up as Aunt B and shove cookies in your bra all weekend? I don't care, nor do I want to know. You always, always separate your work and personal life. You see how many folks are getting canceled, fired, arrested for combining the two now? Don't lead by taking charge. Two, no matter what your job title is, if there is a woman in your field of work who is doing the exact same job you are doing, tell her how much money you make. First of all, why did she have to whisper that? And secondly, how about no? Most companies have rules about that kind of stuff for a reason. Someone else knowing your salary also too isn't going to necessarily qualify you for the same amount. Each employee has the opportunity to negotiate many times throughout their careers their salaries. Other people's salaries are not your business. You don't like your salary? Go ask for more or get another job! 
don't don't depend on some man to be honest with you about that or expect them to just volunteer information that's none of your business. And then do something about it when you realize how much more you are being paid. She says, when you realize, what if the situation is actually reversed? And what exactly is he supposed to do about it? Give up part of his salary for you? Would you do that if it was the other way around? I think not. But the pay gap between genders and races in America is indicative of the overall equality gap in America. I don't know how many times this has been debunked, and by a lot of women, too. I was never paid any less to do my job. You know why? Because I never have been afraid to go and ask for it or go somewhere else if my requests weren't met. And one of the best ways men can help level it out is by being transparent about their income. This again is bullshit and still not anyone's business. Three, if you see something, say something. If a woman is being harassed, bullied, or silenced in your presence, have a zero tolerance policy. Don't tell yourself it's their problem to solve. Workplace harassment and assault can often be ended if someone of parallel privilege and power does something about it. First of all, this is not a thing. Identity politics at work once again. Obviously, you're both privileged. You both work hopefully somewhere that you love to work. Second of all, you'd better be damn sure what you're interfering in is what you think it is. It could cause a whole mess and you could be the one in trouble if you're wrong. The appropriate thing to do would be to talk to that person that you think is being abused and then advise them accordingly and support them in reporting it to the correct authorities as a witness, etc. I do not recommend butting into something you might get yourself fired over. Put your neck out on the line for those who, as Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg once said, live with feet on their necks. Notice she has to name drop here like her expertise wasn't quite enough to push that idea out there. Again, who are these folks nowadays with feet on women's necks? Point them out to me because I'll stand right there next to you and stamp them out. See what I did there? In fact, aren't there actually laws against all the things she's talking about here? So why not fall back on some of that and use those to your advantage? Why do women need so much support in all of this? There are tons and tons of venues and agencies out there that are supposed to be able to help with stuff like this. I've actually been to one of them myself. Isn't that what women's empowerment is supposed to be? Women not needing anyone else to live their lives or make sure that they're safe and sound? Hell, I've seen women get angry at men for opening a damn door for them. But they need men to take care of all this stuff she lists now? Please, someone help me make this make sense. Ladies, if you feel unsafe or someone is bothering you, you go tell someone in authority right away. Put it on record or tell someone that you trust. Why on earth would you wait for someone else to notice and then say something? It's happening to you! When more women are in positions of power and there is equal representation in the room, there is less space for the abuse of power. <laughs> As if women never abuse their power. If I'm not mistaken, this manifesto is designed to instruct men to let women have all the power. If you think that women are not capable of abusing power, then you are probably quite naive to what our second in command has been up to her entire life. And I mean other than with her legs up. Physical or otherwise. Four. Put your money where your matriarchs are. Support organizations and causes that help to build and strengthen the next generation of women. Really? So now, not only do men have to tell you what they make and make sure that they give up some if they make more than you do to equalize the pay for you, but now men have to give up even more of their money? 
Forget about if they've got kids or a family or any other responsibilities. Just give all your money to women and all their causes. From politics to creative writing. Wait, isn't that what school is for? Five. When, when it comes, comes to men being, being accused of bad behavior, behavior let's, let's leave the ancient, messy laws of the American justice system and instead listen to the rational and reasonable intelligence of women like Roxanne Gay. Oh yeah, let's just forget the judicial system and everything that actually supports and helps to protect women's rights, as she's calling them, and listen to someone that we've never heard of before. And she's supposedly rational and intelligent. Let's see. On whether or not she believes Woody Allen did or did not molest his daughter, Dylan Farrow, she once wrote, I know where I stand and why. I know I would rather stand where I stand and eventually be proven wrong than support Woody Allen and eventually be proven wrong. So, in other words, guilty. <sighs> Anyone order a word salad sandwich? Sounds kind of like double standards that are being justified by double speak. And, by the way, who asked for her support of Woody Allen? And what has that got to do with this manifesto? In, In other words, words my friends, err on the side of, of women, not, not on the side of your brethren. If you are my friend, you won't do that. You'll err on the side of truth and true equality. And how about stop telling folks what to do? You don't like it? Do something about it yourself. This is your problem. You don't speak for me, and you certainly don't have a clue about my life and my experiences with all of this. Not to mention, you wrote this book and manifesto based on what some man said to you about understanding what women want after your light bulb went off. I'm actually no more inclined to listen to you and adhere to your rhetoric than having a desire to eat bugs, which is actually a subject for another video coming up, I hope. So you know what? You can take your manifesto and well, you know what you can do with it. That's, That's all I have, I have for you. Thank God for small favors. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for, for coming, coming to my, my shrill, irritating, irritating, very long, angry, overweight, unelectable, unelectable feminist lecture. That's the first bit of truth I've seen her say in this whole video. If, if you, you want to read more, more you can check out my book, book Era of Ignition. Ignition. Let's, Let's keep fighting, fighting on. on. Now you see what I mean. First of all, if the roles were reversed when discussing these manifesto rules, the pink hats would be marching, trying to put their boots on some necks. Second, if anyone ever came to me with these demands, I would probably tell them to, well, I think you already know, as I am doing this video. And third, activores are not experts on anything, in my opinion. Most of them have been fed a line of propaganda that makes them feel good for their own privilege or that they can exploit to make more money from. I think this person that I just reviewed is case in point, hence the book. And of course, they go from there, making things up and trying to push their beliefs on everyone else. Most times, if anyone were to actually follow these so-called rules to the T, it would probably be to the detriment of those that feel the need for such rules in the first place. Will this one be eaten by her own brethren too? Like Chrissy Teigen or Ellen DeGeneres? I guess we'll see. I do hope you enjoyed my video this week. If you'd like for me to continue my work on these videos, please make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. A donation would be the ultimate, and I'm still sending out unique gifts for your donations. 
I'm also posting on other platforms due to the censorship that has been happening here. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my stuff. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time... Thank you.